Dairy is scary. I mean, that's what the young and trendy are saying, but what does that actually mean? Milk is a staple of our diet, and it's something we've been consuming for a very long time. And yet the ASA recently branded milk as inhumane. And where are these health claims coming from? What do they mean? If even half the things that people are saying about dairy are true, then why are we still eating it? Why are we drinking it? Why are we still feeding it to our kids? It's a minefield out there. In this first episode of a new show here on the channel, we'll be diving into the facts, and only the facts, to find out what the f*** is wrong with dairy. This is Keep A Vegan. Sometimes I want to take it from a little to a lot And I am spinning in a circle like a dizzy little top And I am calling all the people I'd forgotten about And trying to tell them that I'd figured it out But it's a lie and all the stupid things I say and do And never really stop when I should never have begun I really ought to drop it But it's faster when you don't even have time to stop And think about the things that you were saying Cause they never really matter But it's empty spaces in the air Fill it up, fill it up, fill it up, oh no, oh no. First off, let's open this way out. What is milk? Milk is a fluid made internally by recent mammal mothers to feed their infants. Pretty much all mammals do exactly the same thing, apart from the weird ones that do it differently. Looking at you, Echidnas. Milk contains all the necessary minerals, nutrients, and even things like immune function to get the baby animal going. It's like push starting a car. Mum gets the wheels turning until Junior is able to get his own system up and running at 100%. Once a child has passed the weaning stage of childhood, they no longer consume milk, and Mum stops producing it. That's because the infant is now able to eat normal food and the bodies actually stop producing lactase, which is needed to actually break down lactose, the sugar in milk. There is only one species that continues to drink milk past infancy. There is only one species that drinks the milk of another species. It's the same species. It's us. It's, it's, it's us species. For some reason, we picked up the gross habit of drinking the milk from cows a while back and like a toddler drawing dicks on the wall in crayon, it was novel at the start. But now he's 30 and we're on first name terms with the staff at the Dulux counter. When we say dairy, we mean any products coming from cow's milk. So milk, cheese, yogurt and cream of both the ice and non-ice varieties. Human milk and cow's milk are about the same on fat. We've got a little bit more. But our milk contains more sugar and cow's milk contains more protein, around three times more. So let's get into it. What is in cow's milk? You've got water and we're fine with that. Water's great. Water's amazing. You can get it without sucking it out of a cow, but that's just my opinion. Then we've got carbohydrates, sugar, at around 4.9%. 3.4% is fat, and 3.3% is protein, compared to about 0.8% in human milk. That's important, remember that. The remaining 0.7% is minerals, things like your calcium. So there we have our list of ingredients. We can get rid of water, because we don't really care about water, and the other minerals, because they're no real interest to us at the moment. So we are left with sugar, fat, protein, and calcium. So that's what dairy is. Now let's take a look at what the f is wrong with it. Now there's nothing inherently wrong with lactose, per se, as long as you're three months old. Remember earlier how I mentioned that we are the only species to continue drinking milk after the weaning stage of childhood? That's because other mammals become lactose intolerant in adolescence, as they no longer need to consume it. Their bodies stop producing lactase, so they can't actually break down and process the lactose. Incidentally, this is a trait shared by pretty much every single mammal on the planet, along with most of people in Asia and Africa and a good chunk of the Western world. The ability to break down the sugar in milk, known as lactase persistence, is a party trick that only 30 odd percent of the human world know. And it's only one we picked up in the last 10,000 years or so. Why? Well, because we insisted on forcing it into our diet. Now, this may have provided some risky sustenance at a time where survival was much harder, but it's not needed now. So the sugar in milk, not much to say on the subject, mostly harmless, but it shows that this isn't something our body is supposed to be consuming once we've learned to stop being, you know, two. That said, this study from 2016 noted that lactose was associated with an increased rate of ovarian cancer in African-American women. Mind you, they do note that this might not be from the lactose, it might be from the fat in milk. Speaking of... Milk contains fat, but is this good fat or is it bad fat? It's mostly saturated fat, isn't it? 
Is that good saturated fat or bad saturated fat? Fat's good. Healthy fat. Healthy fat. Good fat. But Ben butters back. Let's just make one thing absolutely clear. Saturated fat is bad for you. Categorically 100% science, saturated fat is bad for you. None of this cutting butter is back business. Saturated fat is bad for you. If you honestly think that saturated fat is good for you, take a recently used George Foreman drip tray and spread that shit on toast. Then eat it. Eat it like a creamy, pus-coloured yoghurt. <sighs> this insane confusion over fat is costing you, but it's rewarding the meat and dairy industry. So let's be absolutely clear on something. There is dietary fat and internally produced fat. The fat you eat and the fat you make. Same as cholesterol. You can make good cholesterol, but you can't eat it. Your body makes more than enough. Let's back it up for a moment. What is saturated fat? Saturated fat is called saturated fat because the fat molecule is saturated with hydrogen atoms. You can tell if fat is saturated because it will be pretty much solid at room temperature. It appears in all animal products and tropical oils like coconut and palm and to a much lesser extent vegetable oils. No, coconut oil is not good for you. It's oil. It's 87% fat. Stop lying, vegans. You're making us look bad to the people who drink breast milk in their 30s. Saturated fat is linked to, but not the same thing as cholesterol. For one thing, saturated fat actually stimulates cholesterol production in your liver. Cholesterol is a vital component of us, with 30% of our cell membranes being made of it. All animals synthesize or produce their own cholesterol. Okay, this is the part where it gets really cool. Cholesterol can't dissolve in water, not really, so it struggles to move through the body. So your body makes these little transports called lipoproteins. These lipoproteins carry the cholesterol on the inside, being lipid or fat soluble internally, but outwardly water soluble, meaning they can shift the cholesterol place to place around your blood without it getting stuck stupid places or causing any problems. It's like little cholesterol submarines. These transports are primarily low density lipoproteins, commonly if slightly misnomically referred to as LDL cholesterol. However, if this process gets knocked out of sync, your body will start shipping LDLs with no receptors. Little submarines with no way to identify who they are. What do we know happens when unrecognized proteins are found wandering around your bloodstream? In come the macrophages, your immune system, oxidizing the LDL and creating a little foam layer that gets stuck on the wall of your blood vessels. Now these foam cells then die, dumping out their contents, including that water-insoluble cholesterol, and thus attracts more macrophages. The result is a thick plaque that builds on the vessel wall, which leads to increased pressure, inflexible arteries, and can lead to heart disease. The saturated fat and cholesterol in dairy contribute to this horrific situation, and the fat is also making us fat. And obesity lowers your HDL production, HDL or high-density lipoproteins, being the vacuum cleaners that soak up all the spare cholesterol in your blood when your cells naturally die and break down. This study from 2017 found that increasing dairy lipids, or fats, increased central blood pressure, and taking it away reduced it. Fat has 9 calories per gram, and sugar only has 4. When you eat fat, your body knows what it is. It's fat. It recognizes it, so it just stores it as fat. Fat slows your metabolism down because historically, fat was an okay thing. We eat some fat from seeds or nuts that we found, and our body goes, holy sh**, we can store this in case we don't find food to eat later. Now our bodies are doing the same thing, trying to help us survive, stockpiling the fat, but it doesn't need to, because we're not going to starve. We store up the fat mostly in our cells, and our body slows mitochondria production to stop us from unnecessarily burning it. Also, the fat builds up in cells, blocking insulin receptors and preventing sugar from getting into the cells, leaving it to pile up in the bloodstream. Does that sound familiar? It should, because that's type 2 diabetes, and it is 100% curable without medication. But <sighs> more on that bag of fun another time. Let's go back to that George Foreman drip tray. Anyone who has washed one of those out will know that the second any of that gank touches your fingers, that's it. That's your life now. It doesn't wash off. It doesn't scrape off. These are your new hands now. Get used to dropping heavy plates and attracting dogs. Now imagine what that's doing to your delicate internal organs. You can George Foreman steak, but you can't do it to milk, so you can't see the effects. Not even I'm stupid enough to try that. And I legitimately, I once tried to grill a, my, a mini dream bar. It melted through the bars of the grill, obviously. I'm going to do a full video on fat and cholesterol in the future, but this alone shows that saturated fat is bad for you.
Butter is back. Also, the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine have a list of 12 studies that linked saturated fat to prostate cancer, metabolism, breast cancer, breast cancer, poor brain health, cancer, poor insulin function, Alzheimer's, type 1 diabetes, death, weight gain, and brain failure. Linked below for your pleasure. The fat in milk called butter fat is what determines how it is sold. In a cup of milk, and that's a measuring cup, not a glass, there are 2.4 grams of fat, 1.5 of which is saturated, with another 12.2 micrograms of cholesterol. And guess what? That's the low-fat milk as well. Whole milk has 8 grams of fat, with 4.5 of that being saturated, and 24.4 milligrams of cholesterol. According to the Framingham Health Study, we should be eating less than 150 milligrams of cholesterol per day. Here's another one for you. One slice of cheddar cheese, just one slice, has 9 grams of fat, 6 of which are saturated fat, and 29.4 milligrams of cholesterol. One slice. Ooh, ooh, another one. This is good. I'm enjoying this. One cup of mozzarella, one, a moderate amount for a medium-sized pizza, one cup of mozzarella cheese, 25 grams of fat, 15 grams of saturated fat, and <laughs> this is just the cheese on a pizza, not the meat, not the toppings, not any additional cheese, 88.5 milligrams of cholesterol. 88.5 milligrams. Holy sh**. I'm super glad that's all that's wrong with milk. Oh no, this just in. It gets considerably worse. The stuff of life. That's actually not far off. Protein is a fundamental part of our bodies, responsible for making up pretty much all the stuff inside us. Protein is made up of amino acids, 20 or so amino acids that form a bajillion proteins through combinations of various combinations. Think Lego. 22 different Lego blocks can be used to make a spaceship or a race car or a wolf or a fireman or a patriarchy or a Rihanna or a spa. Remember earlier when I said that cow's milk had way more protein in it than human milk? I'm pretty sure that wasn't the right clip. Look, here's the here's the rubble, simple like. Cows have more protein in their milk because calves need to get bigger as fast as possible. They live outside, in the elements, around potential predators. And I don't know if you've ever been to Somerset, but there's like lions and shit out there. In all seriousness, we all know protein is super important, so surely it's a good thing that cow's milk has tons of protein in it. Right? Well, no. T. Colin Campbell started life on a dairy farm. He saw his chance to go into science as an opportunity to help people. His initial goal being, how can we get more protein out of cows? His research took an incredible twist, however, following an eye-opening, if confusing, study from India that related protein with cancer growth. Campbell noticed two things during his work in Asia, trying to fight malnutrition. His goal was to bring protein, the most important foodstuff at the time, to the impoverished and malnourished kids in the Philippines. And the cheapest source of protein was peanuts. It turns out the peanuts would often become laced with aflatoxin, one of the most potent carcinogens in the world. A carcinogen being a cancer-causing substance, by the way, like radiation. Now, these peanuts were causing liver cancer to spread like wildfire, but it was mostly amongst children. And strangely, it wasn't the poor, malnourished children eating the worst quality peanuts. Campbell noticed it was the rich children, the ones being fed the highest quality peanuts, but also the most meat and dairy who were developing fatal liver cancer before their teens. Weird, right? Well, it gets weirder. Campbell began testing protein as a factor in cancer growth. Using aflatoxin, he would give rats cancer. Not exactly vegan, but hang in there. He would then give some of them a 5% protein diet and the other group a 20% protein diet. We, as a species, are supposed to have 10% of our calories coming from protein, by the way. The ones on a 20% protein diet all developed cancer, but the ones on a 5% diet didn't. Now, this is one of the most potent carcinogens in the world, and the 5% rats were just shrugging it off like it was nothing. So, he tried doing the same thing, but then this time, partway through, he would swap the diets over. Now, the ones who were on a 5% diet and didn't grow any cancer suddenly started developing cancers is the second they were on a 20% diet. Now, the ones on a 20% diet who were growing cancers the second they were switched to a 5% diet, their cancers stopped growing. 
Then they did some more tests and they swapped over a bunch more times and Campbell and his team found they were able to turn cancer and on, on and off again like a light switch. This is, by the way, the same disease that we spend billions every single year on finding a cure for. So why am I mentioning this now? Because the protein Campbell and his team were using to grow cancer like f***ing bone meal in Minecraft was casein. The primary protein in cow's milk. Yep, that casein. Campbell then went on to undertake the China study, which I absolutely recommend reading about in the book of the same name. You can tell it's a science book because the title can also be used as a sedative. Oh, by the way, he tried the exact same test with other proteins, namely soy and gluten, and they had no effect. This is a, an issue that comes from animal proteins. What's going on? Well, protein causes growth. Lots of protein causes rampant growth. Imagine a conveyor belt in a production line. In fact, f it, let's take a walk back into the past. When I lived in Cornwall, I worked in a factory packing pasties and scones. We'd stand on the line, and as a swarm of food came along the production line, we had to grab them and place them in containers on a parallel line, uh, uh, where they would then go down and be shrink-wrapped. It was a shit job, but yeah, I digress. The scones had to be decent-sized and, and well-made and in good shape, and they had to be placed in the packaging the right way round, very meticulously. Every now and then, you'd get a scabby scone. Scabby scone. Ugh. It sounds like a midlife crisis fueled cover band from Surrey. Same happens in your liver cells, for example. The scones are the things entering your cell for processing, and the carcinogenic cells are the scabby scones. Now playing at the line and key down the road. If the conveyor belt went too fast, containers wouldn't be filled right and scabby scones would get through. Consuming a healthy amount of plant protein, 10%, means that your liver cell will work at a steady pace, and fewer, if any, carcinogens will get bonded and make it through into your bloodstream. This study from 2011 took groups of men from Iceland and found that high milk intake in adolescence was associated with a more than threefold increase in advanced prostate cancer. In fact, a 2001 Harvard review found that 12 out of 14 case control studies and 7 out of 9 cohort studies observed a correlation between dairy intake and prostate cancer. Quote, One of the most consistent dietary predictors for prostate cancer in the published literature. And that's not the only cancer that dairy's been specifically linked to either. That said, here's four more studies on prostate cancer and dairy just for good measure. Board of Cancer? Well, I've got another one for you. Remember how the fat in dairy contributed to type 2 diabetes? Well, don't worry you completionists and achievement hunters out there, because we got the full set. This is one of my favourites. This study highlights the link between consumption of casein with the formation of type 1 diabetes. You see, type 1 is caused by an autoimmune reaction in your early years, and like a virus, casein is non-human protein. However, the thing that makes me smile about this study is that it was funded by the dairy industry. In a spec... Spectacular little finger-esque move. The A2 company is using the dangers of regular or A1 casein to advertise their A2 milk. They are throwing traditional dairy under the bus. A2 casein can't be broken down into a certain peptide, which we'll, we'll go on to in a sec. So it doesn't have some of the same horrendous effects. It's still dairy and it, it's still shit. It's still really bad for you. But nice try, A2. In the game of ruminants, you live or you... Oh, that's terrible. More like game of groans, am I right? I'm so lonely. So the protein in cow's milk is pretty <laughs> But this rabbit hole goes deeper. This isn't even the weirdest part, or some would argue the worst. What if I told you that the protein in cow's milk was associated with sudden infant death syndrome? Like I said before, all proteins are super long chains of a few amino acids in different positions. The bonds that hold these amino acids together get broken down in your gut, releasing all the little Lego bricks to be absorbed and reused by your body to make new protein. Well, sometimes those bonds hold fast, and you end up with chains of a few amino acids stuck together called peptides. These peptides, like mini proteins, can be harmless, but one in particular is of interest to us today. A peptide that can be left behind when casein is being broken down is called casomorphin. Now I want you to really examine that word for a moment. Caso, as in casein. Morphine, as in, yeah, morphine. Casomorphin has been shown to behave like an opioid, like morphine or heroin. In order to react with the opioid receptors in your brain, the casomorphin has to get through your blood-brain barrier in your gut. 
What does this mean in real terms? Well, milk is addictive, cheese is addictive, ice cream is addictive, chocolate's addictive, dairy is addictive. Dr. Neil Bernard reckons the reason this morphine-like drug is in milk in the first place is to stop calves wandering off in the wild. They're not gonna run too far away from their mothers because they need the fix. And you think the dairy industry doesn't know this? In 2000, they worked with the government to introduce more cheese to fast food because it's addictive. Why would the US government do that? Because the same branch that looks after public health and eating, the USDA, is also in charge of making sure that farmers make lots of money. Who do you think they're gonna side with? Now, this may not be the case in everyone, especially if your blood-brain barrier is good, DPP-4 is fine, but what about babies? Well, that leads us on to what we mentioned earlier. SIDS, or Sudden Infant Death Syndrome, is a horrifying condition where a baby will seemingly just pass away with little to no cause or trigger. Well, due to their less well-developed guts, the casomorphins are getting into their bloodstreams. In fact, according to this study from 2011, 50% of infants hospitalized with ALTE symptoms or apparent life-threatening events have various gastrointestinal disorders recognized at the time. After an ALTE or apnea episode, something you could call a SIDS close call, 88% of kids had casomorphin in their bloodstream. This followed a previous case of one child who showed the same thing. The only outstanding thing about the infant with ALTE was a high amount of casomorphin in his bloodstream. Research on this is continuing, but this study from 2015 very adeptly sums up the process and the mechanisms to date. At the end of the day, why take the risk with the safety of your kids? Whew. To take the edge off, here's one that I find really interesting. This study from 1998 claims that beta casomorphin 7 affected the diets of rats. BCM7 stimulated fat intake, but inhibited carb intake. Not sure where to take that just now, but that's kind of fascinating. <sighs> Calcium. Me, this all got depressing. What about calcium? We know all calcium is good for us. Right. Calcium makes our bones grow stronger. Mama says pity for you has my bones grow stronger. 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 Want to keep the old osteoporosis at bay, right? Stay off the walk at 45 years old, right? Avoid paying for a stupid replacement hip that isn't even bionic, right? Drink milk, right? No. This study of some people found that drinking milk didn't help prevent fractures and breaks. If anything, it made things worse. Ah, oh, Ben, it can't be that big of a study. How many people were involved in this crazy, miraculous milk doesn't help fractures study that you're going on about? Oh, sh you got me. The study only comprised of 72,337 women. Yeah, stick that in your pipe and smoke it. That's probably going to be healthier than drinking milk at this point. So why is this happening now? According to the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, the problem is not so much getting calcium into your body, but getting it into your bones and keeping it there. Added salt and smoking can both encourage the calcium to leach from your bones, weakening them. This is also caused by animal proteins. This does not happen with plant proteins, by the way. This is, a, this is an animal protein thing. That and dairy is full of retinol, which is pre-made vitamin A. Not the good kind of vitamin A you get from carrots and vegetables. Pre-made, because another animal or creature pre-made it in their internal system, then we just ate that. Retinol causes osteoporosis. Also, in this 2013 study, dairy calcium is highlighted as a possible mechanism for lowering intracellular 125 dihydroxycholocalciferol concentrations, leading to prostate cancer. Also, also, dairy calcium has been linked to higher rates of Parkinson's disease, along with protein. Why do I keep specifying dairy calcium? Because the same doesn't happen with non-dairy sources of calcium. Also, also, remember that study earlier about African-American women and ovarian cancer? They found that calcium helped lower the rates of cancer, but this effect is being overbalanced by all the other shit in milk. It's worth pointing out that cows don't drink milk as adults, they get their calcium from plants. They, all herbivores do. As Dr. Milton Mills points out. The reason I got this moose up here is because we've all seen a picture of an adult moose, right? That rack of antler weighs about 85 pounds and is made out of solid bone. And the moose grows that, those antlers in a span of about three months, eating nothing but green leafy plant foods. Your entire skeleton only weighs about 35 pounds. 
took you probably 25 years to grow that. A moose can grow 85 pounds of bone in three months eating plant foods. You do not need dairy food. Other honorable mentions. Saturated fat is linked to dementia, uh, acne. Milk stimulates growth through growth hormones like mTORC1. Uh, it's linked to psoriasis, Parkinson's, male fertility, Crohn's disease, hyperthyroidism. Bovine leukemia virus has been associated with causing breast cancer in humans. The presence of antibiotic resistant genes, lead poisoning and toxins, as well as things like rheumatoid arthritis, allergies, asthma. <sighs> now, unbelievably, there is one last thing I want to come on to. But before that, the cheese is f***ing gross quick fire challenge. 30 seconds on the clock, please. Cheese is 70% fat. Cheese is often made with artificial rennet because it's too expensive to keep scraping it out of the guts of baby cows. Cheese has been found to lower sperm counts. Cheese is made with butyric acid. That's why good quality Parmesan smells like sick. Colho cheese from Brazil is often infested with E. coli and salmonella. Cheddar contains five times the amount of sulfur of white potatoes, which when broken down in your gut leads to BO, halitosis, and the farts of a corpse. Smelly feet is caused by Brevi bacteria, the same bacteria that is used for stinky cheeses like... Ah, oh, really? I didn't even get to mention the Sardinian jumping maggot cheese. Oh well. So to recap, cow's milk is produced for baby cows, but we drink it anyway. In cow's milk, there is sugar, lactose, which on average we as a species can't consume, apart from some white people in Europe and America. It also contains fat, a lot of which is saturated, which causes obesity, heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and is linked to some cancers. Not nearly as many as protein, however, which have been found to act on cancer like fertilizer, helping it get started and helping it grow. Not only is high protein forcing everything to grow very rapidly, no matter how misshapen or damaged the starting point is, like a sunflower seed that grows sunflowers, but instead of leaves, it little grows little mini Adam Sandlers that are resistant to pesticide. But the main protein, casein, breaks down into mini casein morphins, which are addictive and could be causing opioid responses in infants and shutting down their breathing and killing them. That, and as a non-human protein, like a virus, cow's milk is triggering all sorts of autoimmune responses, leading to arthritis, skin and, and breathing issues, type 1 diabetes, and it's leaching the calcium from our bones, making the most milk-drinkingest countries the most brittle boned. And that's just the start. You just don't see these issues affecting countries and demographics that don't drink cow's milk. And as consumption of it increases, like it is, the sicker we get, the more we look to drugs to fix us. I just want to show you this. Anytime you find a study that says milk is good for bone health, you will nearly always see that the study has been funded by the dairy industry, the pharmaceutical industry, or both. This is an extreme example. This one I found the other day. Those yellow ones are all pharmaceutical, and the red one is dairy. Trustworthy, I'm sure. Boy, we've sure had a lot of fun on today's episode of what the f*** is wrong with... But now I need to take it down a notch, because for all the pain and suffering that dairy is causing people all over the world, there is someone who is suffering more. Quick exercise for you at home. When do women lactate? When do women produce breast milk? If you're a woman, I'm sure you probably already know the answer to this question. If you're a bloke, maybe ask a nearby woman. A passing stranger, maybe. Now those of you who aren't 13 probably just said, after childbirth. Women only make milk when they're breastfeeding their kids because to do it in any other time would be a massive waste of internal energy and nutrients and resources to make it. The same is true of cows. Every single glass of milk you drink was made by a cow for their young. In order to produce milk, a cow has to have recently had a baby, a calf. But farms won't allow those calves to nurse from their mother because every drop of milk a cow consumes is a drop less to sell. Calves are usually removed from their mother's side within the first 24 hours, which often results in the mothers lashing out to protect their children. There are many videos online of people being attacked by mother cows and even fellow mothers who have already lost their children. They're already grieving their children and they're trying to defend the other children of the herd. Cows grieve, by the way. Residents near Sunshine Dairy Farm were woken up by a terrible wailing sound, scary enough that several people actually called the police. The sound turned out to be the wails of cows screaming for their children. The industry calls that a reflex. By the way, the best way to stop mothers harming farmers? 
violently remove their horns without painkillers. That's called this budding. The child is taken away in a wheelbarrow, either to be raised in a hutch until she's old enough to be tied into what the industry, and I swear I'm not exaggerating here, this is literally what the dairy industry refers to this as, strapped into the rape rack, where they will be painfully inseminated with a child of her own. If the child is male, however, he will either be sold off as veal or most likely just be killed to be used in baby food and pies which is disposed of. What about the mother? Well, once the baby has been removed, she'll go right back into the rape rack to be impregnated again. All whilst the farming, machines and equipment take more milk than a baby would naturally drink. A cow's lifespan is 20-25 years. On a dairy farm, they're lucky to hit five. The animals themselves are beaten, dragged, hosed, their massive swollen nipples dragging across the piss and shit covered concrete flooring until infections flare up. Here's one we didn't discuss earlier. Do you know what a somatic cell is? No? There's a good reason for that. It's a nice sounding sciencey word the dairy industry made up to cover up the fact that dead endothelial cells, pus, is getting sucked out of their blistered and cracked teats along with the milk and then mixed in a massive vat with all the milk and pus of all the other cows. Not that the multiple cows thing matters because the machines are so poorly and irregularly cleaned that infections spread like wildfire anyway. It's bad enough there's actually a limit on the number of somatic cells allowed to be in milk that is sold, and no, it isn't zero. A cow is infected with mastitis. Ask your mum. If there is a somatic cell count of 200,000 cells per milliliter, cows with significant pathogens have a count of 300,000 or more cells. Cows with an SCC of more than 400,000 cells is deemed unfit for human consumption. 400,000 cells per milliliter, and if it's above that, they won't sell it. Here, in the EU. In the US, it's a million cells. According to Dr. Michael Greger's math, there's only a drop of pus in each glass of US milk. About half a drop for us. Don't worry though, because we pasteurize our milk, right? We blast it with heat to kill all of the bacteria. So it's dead pus. There's, there's half a drop of dead pus in a glass of milk. Like the good doctor says, would you eat a small nugget of shit if someone told you that it was fully irradiated, there was no bacteria in there anymore? Of course you wouldn't, because that's grody as fuck. Just in case you're thinking that the abuse and the pain doesn't happen in this country, it only happens in other countries, there is a lot of evidence to the contrary. The animal welfare rules that farmers have to abide by say that the width of any stall for a calf must be the same as the animal's height, and the length of the stall must be at least as long as the cow times 1.1. The calf's length times 1.1. A calf of 1.5 metres long gets an extra 15 centimetres free movement on a length. In fact, conditions are cruel enough at the best of times that the Advertising Standards Authority, presiding over a number of complaints against this Go Vegan World advert, ruled that cow's milk can fairly and legitimately be referred to as inhumane. This decision was based on actual scientific evidence. Inhumane. Look, cows are dipshits. They run, they jump, they play, they do all the dipshit things we love dogs for. They make relationships, they cuddle, they are social, intelligent beings. So when a baby is torn from its mother and the mother cries and the baby panics, ending up in a tiny stall with a couple of centimetres to move, so desperate to suckle at its mother that it obsessively gums on fences, bars and even themselves. Think of the pain that's being caused just by eating and drinking something that scientifically we know is making us sick. That's not me being hyperbolic either. That's biology 101. The reason we feel love for our family, for our parents, is the same in any other species. Because if we didn't, if we didn't stay in our family social groups when we were children, we'd get killed. The continuation of the species depends on babies being born and being protected until they are old enough to look after themselves. We've been lied to so that people can continue to make money. Now, I'm not asking you to spill out onto the streets baying for blood. I'm not telling you to go to your local dairy farm and start freeing some animals. If you want to do that, more power to you, and you will always have a friend on this show. I'm just asking for you to do one really simple thing. Stop eating, drinking, consuming dairy. It sounds like a big step, especially for vegetarians, as many of you will already add a lot more dairy to your meals 
than most others, but it's really, really easy. Swapping out milk is the, it's the best part. There's a plant milk for every single thing you would need it for. Now, you might be imagining some thin, watery effluvium with bits of green floating in it, but hang on. Ugh. This is almond milk. We only have comically small glasses, by the way. I'm not taking the This is my personal favourite. It works really nicely in porridge, but drinking it is also really nice as a normal drink. Ugh. Just kidding. You can also have oat milk, which I like drinking as well. Uh, also very good in porridge. Uh, I also use it in baking for things like this apple pie. Using Wallflower Kitchen's recipe linked below. Sam, however, likes having whole bean soya in their tea. Uh, and then she uses things like hazelnut milk for things like hot chocolate. Two years ago, this would have been really difficult to, to find, to get hold of in the supermarket. But now every single supermarket and most of the little ones as well all stock this stuff. As far as cream is concerned, Oatly, who do my favorite oat milk, also do a great double cream. And also, also, a fantastic vanilla custard. It is banging. Ice cream, I'll pro do some vegan options. Walls do one as well called Swedish Glace, which is really nice, especially with that apple pie from earlier. Uh, and the Ben and Jerry's is on the way to the UK as well. Yogurt, uh, I'll pro do some great ones. I like the vanilla one because I'm retro. Cheese, there are loads of brands of cheese and more are emerging every couple of weeks. Fire Life slices are best for things like burgers and sandwiches. Uh, Tesco's do a really good grated mozzarella, which is fantastic on nachos and, and pizza. There's so much. And it's really fun trying them all out and finding the ones you like and the ones you don't like. So give it a go. Head to your local supermarket and just grab a milk or two, maybe try some cheese as well. Definitely some of that vanilla custard. And give it a go. Have a look online, see what other people are saying. Ask people what they think, what they prefer. Use things like Facebook and, and Instagram. And within a week of giving up all dairy, you will be amazed at what happens. Everyone I've convinced to try giving it up has noticed some incredible things happen to them. One person lost all of their inflammation and they feel much better day to day. Another person, her skin completely cleared up. Um, people losing weight and, and finding they feel healthy, they've got more energy. And that's only the stuff on the surface, the, in, the external benefits. The internal stuff, the sky's the limit. After only a short time of not putting that pus-laced cow fertilizer in your mouth, you'll feel incredible. And don't forget, if anyone ever tries to tell you that drinking milk is normal, well, now you know the facts. What the fuck is wrong with dairy? Turns out quite a lot. Remember, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me on any platform. You can head to the website. The sources for today's episode are all on the source archive on the Keeper Vegan website, keepervegan.com. Uh, I suggest you check that out as well. Everything is referenced and linked there. Um, and as always, save the planet, save the animals, save yourself. Go vegan. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. And if you like what I do here and you want to support the next episode of what the f*** is wrong with or anything else I do here, you can head to Patreon and join the cult today.